and within three years we were changing coils. That didn't make sense to me. Hi, Mitch Bailey here. I want to talk about formicary corrosion. What is formicary corrosion? Well, formicary corrosion is a corrosion that exists in evaporator coils on uh, heating and air systems. They're where the copper gives up uh, ions to the aluminum uh, fins, the copper tubing does, and it eats holes in the coil from the outside in. Um, when they cross-section this, they looked at it and it looked like ant nest uh, trails in the copper tubing and so they called it formicary like formic acid for the ants and so it stuck and also they found formaldehyde on the coils acetates and chlorides so the going hypothesis was that this is stuff that's in the air it sticks to the coils and it causes this the coils to degrade part of the 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 reason this happens you also the coil gets wet because it gets cold it gets uh, colder than the dew point because what happens in that evaporator coil is liquid refrigerant flows through a metering device into the evaporator coil and it changes from a liquid to a vapor inside that coil it evaporates that's why it's called evaporator coil and that picks up the heat in the air and then it transfers that heat out to the compressor which compresses it into a higher pressure gas and then as a higher pressure gas it releases that heat as it changes from a vapor to a liquid it condenses in the condenser coil and as that phase change happens it releases that heat now it's liquid refrigerant comes back to the vap coil goes through meeting device and the process is repeated and i'll show you real quick 30 seconds how you know you can do it i tell people blow on the back of the hand when i'm talking to customers i'm going to teach you about air conditioning blow on the back of your hand they blow on their back of the hand i say now lick the back of your hand now blow on it and you'll feel how it's cooler. Your hand gets cold. Well, now your breath's not any cooler. Why is it cold? The moisture on the back of my hand is evaporating faster than it would normally, and so it's picking up more heat. That's changing from a liquid to a vapor, and it's absorbing heat on the back of my hand. Refrigerant does the same thing. Now, there has been all kinds of hypotheses of why this is happening. The big one that Carrier came up with back in the early 2000s was they did a study and they found acetates, chlorides, and formaldehyde. There'll be a link to the in the description for to that paper. And if you if you read that paper and you look at it, you'll see that they found all these chemicals on the coils that they don't use in the manufacturing process. So they supposed it came from the air in the home. Well, my problem was I kept I still found this when people when they did they weren't using any different cleaners. Their old unit lasted 25 years, had no problems, and within three years we were changing coils. That didn't make sense to me because they didn't, they didn't do painting, they didn't put new carpet in, everything was the same in their house. What caused these these failures? So it was a perfect storm, and then I'm gonna at the end I'm gonna tell you what I think it is. Okay, and my hypothesis I think if it ever got studied would actually prove prove true. First of all, it was a perfect storm in that they thinned the copper tubing. Older coils had much thicker copper tubing. They thinned it. This was to get better heat transfer out of the coils. This better heat transfer gives them higher efficiencies, bigger capacities, and so on and so forth. So they thin the copper tubing. Well, if you have this kind of corrosion and it's like much thinner copper tubing, it's going to happen much quicker. This might have been occurring on all coils, but we just weren't seeing it because the coils would actually be replaced before, you know, in 20, 25 years before they'd actually develop a leak. So we, uh, that that's one of the things was that perfect storm with that. The other thing that I also uh, think was happening is I think it's a phenomenon called flow electrification. What happens in flow electrification is any fluid moving through any kind of tubing or hosing or, or, or hose can develop a static charge in certain conditions. Now this static charge, I believe that the refrigerant along with the oil as it's in liquid form is traveling through the copper tubing, develops this, picks up the static charge when it gets into the evaporator coil it releases that static charge and then because it's an anode cathode type reaction between the aluminum fins and the copper tubing the copper tubing gives up its ions and this eats holes in the copper okay i do believe you have to have moisture which that evaporator coil will because it gets colder and it starts to sweat and so that we have moisture and then do the acetates chlorides and formaldehyde contribute to it it probably does somewhat but i feel that it's a flow electrification in fact I was so convinced this is what it was that I approached several universities in the area to see if anybody would take it up and study it. I went to UOP, University of the Pacific that is, UC Davis, UC Merced, Stanislaus State, 
um, and even the junior college here at Modesto Junior College, and none of those departments wanted to take it up and do it as a study. They said it's not sexy enough, okay? So the formicary corrosion, the only fix for this is to switch to an all-aluminum coil. All-aluminum coils are not subject to this type of corrosion because we have aluminum fins, aluminum tubing. When we had just copper tubing aluminum fins, this is where we get the leaks. To, in fact, this week we're going to replace two coils that have uh, leaks in them that are still under warranty with the manufacturer. Now, back when Linux was the, our, they only had five years on the coils, and I had coils failing in three years. So they were giving me the coil, but I was only given two years labor, so I had to charge the customer to change it out. And I wrote letters as soon as this happened, sent out to all my customers, says, you need to buy the extended warranty. I was also very vocal on the Internet. And so... Uh, Linux threatened to sue me because I was so vocal. Here's a, a, a copy of that letter where they said, hey, uh, we'll sue you if you keep this up. And I was like, yeah, let's go ahead and go. Well, anyhow, we dropped the brand. We switched another brand, had all aluminum coils, which is Train. Train's been very good with us. And if, since I did that switch, only time I get leaks in these coils is whether it's a bad factory weld or the copper tubing is or the tubing is rubbing together because they're all aluminum coils. And so, and that happens with copper tubing too. You'll still get coils that'll rub a hole in them. So I don't have the corrosion issue that I did on the copper aluminum on, on, with the all aluminum coils. The other thing, uh, in 2014, I was hired by the lawyers that sued Lennox as an expert witness. Now, my, my expertise is not in corrosion. I'm not a corrosion engineer, I'm not even a scientist. I'm just the contractor. However, I did help them develop the costs that it cost to change these coils out. So in their class action lawsuit settlement, uh, they were able to develop the costs that made Linux pay customers back. And I was implemental in making that, that uh, happen and the, establishing the cost for all that. I, had a, I got paid a fee. I got paid a, a retainer to do all the stuff, which was fine because I really I wasn't trying to stick it to Linux, but I thought Linux just didn't step up and they needed to do the right thing. All right, that being said... Uh, if you can fix this by either having a coil that's tin plated on the evaporator coil or it's all aluminum. Again, I think it's flow electrification. And if somebody out there knows a scientist that wants to pick this up and run with it, hey, call me. <laughs> I'd be happy to talk about it. Because uh, I did back then, Sierra Industries, who manufacture the copper tubing for the uh, uh, industry, for the manufacturers, they make the copper tubing that they use in the coils, contacted me at the time because I was so vocal on the internet and asked me how long I thought it would take to replicate these in a lab, these kind of conditions to where the coils fell, because they were thinking of making an epoxy coated copper tubing to sell to the industry to try to you know, mitigate this and so they because they didn't want to lose all their business by their copper tubing not being used in coils anymore. So I, I, I firmly believe tin plating is fine. I don't have a problem with tin plating. All aluminum coils is the other thing. But if you got a copper aluminum coil, it's not when it will leak or, or if it'll leak, it is when it will leak because it will leak eventually. Now it might happen 20 years, depends how much you use it. And I found that's one of the things I found is most people that use their units quite a bit uh, they were constantly using their units. They ran them more than most. Their coils fell much sooner. And if you take a look at the, some of these some of these pictures up here that I've got of these coils, if you look, you can see where the there's a pattern kind of where the leaks always occurred. Because what we do is we put washers on it, and that would show where the bubbles come up when we put in a dunk tank. And they're all in the same location. And so the that refrigerant, that's about where the refrigerant should be changing state from a vapor or from a liquid to a vapor and releasing that static charge in the coil, which again, it acts like, it's like an electrolysis. It's an anode cathode reaction and it will remove the uh, copper from the tubing and cause it to cause leaks. All right, I hoped you liked this video and I hope it explained formicary corrosion to you. Oh, by the way, there is a couple of guys out there. One guy says it's because we're not pulling good vacuums on system. That's not true because these, these, these holes are not coming from the inside out. He he's postulates that because we're leaving non-condensables in the system, that the non-condensables turn to acid, which they do, if you leave any non-condensables in there. And that creates this, this acid eats away the copper tubing. The problem with is it eats, the, eats from the outside in. In fact, here's a couple of pictures of some corrosion that when I was investigating this, I was taking the coils and cutting them up and finding where the corrosion was. And I found 
in coils that were only three or four years old and that this picture here you can see there's big pits in the in the copper tubing already and then this other picture right here this is copper tubing that uh, on a 25 year old coil that did not show any type of corrosion like this so again i think it was this flow electrification our our switch to thinner copper tubing caused this situation to happen and hopefully you know you you when you go with a coil you'll go with a unit that has an all aluminum coil or it's tin plated and that should be fine i don't think you'll have a problem with either one of those and it should last you for the life of the system which should be 15 to 20 years on most systems all right i hope you liked the video please oh wait one more i got one more i forgot there was another guy that's postulating that it was that it's the ph levels are too high that was also what's causing it at the time i was testing ph levels in my laboratory here's a picture of my lab and we did uh, i did uh, I was taking condensate water, testing them constantly. I did not find they were slightly acidic, but it wasn't it wasn't a lot. And I found this on coils that were no leaks, and I found it with coils that had leaks. So it's not it's not that we have high pH coming off of the coils. That's not the problem either. It all comes back to I think it's flow electrification is the issue. I wish there was somebody you know, somebody might see this and say, hey, uh, maybe a scientist or some guy in uh, physics or a chemistry guy might take it up and investigate it and see if they can figure it out too because I think, again, I think it's flow electrification. And there will be some links to some papers to flow electrification in the description if you want to read through them because I, I did read them all. And and it does pertain to our industry because we, we do have the same phenomenon, I think, happening in our refrigerant flow into the system. All right. I hope you liked, and this is the last one, I hope you liked the video. Please like and subscribe, and uh, I hope to see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.